The master poet arrives fashionably late. He steps on the open mic, this is true. Do you think he really wants to listen to you? A burgundy silk scarf drapes his neck, bien français. If heads turn his way while you do your three minute or five minute dance, so much the better. He tweaks and twitters on his tablet, no doubt, and takes no notice of your vain attempt to stare him down with words. The master poet suggests, subtly, you buy at least one of his many books displayed on the mantelpiece. If you genuflect at least six inches, he rewards you with his autograph. Do not be taken aback if he asks the curator why she has not featured him in her poetry series. <laughs> it is his divine right, you see, to feature. When she replies, his eyes either dart to various parts, I'm sorry, if if, when she replies, his eyes either veil over or dart to various parts of the room. This is quite natural, you see, for his thoughts have already turned to the next book deal. <laughs> I just want to say very briefly that uh, this punk, Bernie and I just returned from South Wales where in Larne, where Dylan Thomas spent the last four years of his life, from 1949 to 1953, and this poem was born out of that experience. For Dylan Thomas, upon the centenary of his birth. Larne, curious Larne, you remain alone, no lines connect, where cocklers still leave stone damp flats at dawn, to dig for cockles in the silted sand. Silt the moon, the late moon discloses to tug the river Tav away, away from heron priested shore and dissolve in sky, sky so big the clouds spill in upon the river. Larn, dreaming Larn, gulls glide down your distant fells, trail shrill notes that pierce blue air do you hear or do you dream of limb-weary Welsh lads carousing your pubs? Heavy days, soot spent, heaving coal from river barge. Oh, Larn, do you dream, do you still dream of the poet in the boathouse perched there on the cliff? Beautiful. Thank you.